Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Um, and so today I'm kind of following up on my Apache Hoodie video um, and wanted to have a second video also going through this kind of you know competitor within this open data lake house space, the Apache projects that are covering kind of the data lake house niche, we have Apache Iceberg. Um, and so want to explore what Apache Iceberg is, how it works, give you some of the main use cases it was developed for, the use cases it's used for now, some of the biggest companies that kind of collaborate with it, hint Snowflake's one of them, uh, and then go into some of the pros and cons of using Apache Iceberg, probably in preparation for a future comparison video between Iceberg and Hootie. Uh, but for now, just wanted to cover Iceberg, give you kind of a standalone video so that you can come here and get a good understanding of what Iceberg is, how it works, and if it's the right tool for your particular use case. So without further ado, let's get into it. So at its most basic level, Apache Iceberg is really just a high performance table format that's used for handling really large analytic data sets. It was first developed by Netflix, but then was adopted by the Apache Software Foundation. And it aims to address the limitations of traditional data table formats in really big data environments, specifically, you know, a lot of times in data lakehouse environments and offers robust scheme evolution, partitioning and metadata management capabilities. So kind of like some high level you know, ideas of you know, how exactly Apache Iceberg works and how it kind of differentiates itself from the competition. Uh, number one, you have things like table format and metadata management handled at the file level. So Iceberg tables store data in columnar file formats, so like Parquet, Avro, or ORC. And the key differentiator here from you know, just a standard Parquet file is that it has an advanced metadata layer which contains the table state without the need for a centralized catalog service. So it makes it easier to quickly read and understand the contents of the table without needing to have a centralized catalog that contains all the information around all of your tables. Um, and then Iceberg also uses snapshot-based metadata management. So you have safe and consistent reads and writes because if you know something happens, there's a bad write, something corrupts, you can go back to previous snapshots of that particular table because you have that metadata that contains all those past transformations that you can then roll back. So some other key features um, are scheme evolution. You, know, you have Iceberg support scheme evolution without requiring any kind of costly rewrites of existing data. Um, and so users can add, drop, rename columns, make really any kind of schema changes very easily. Um, and then you have kind of resiliency built in because you have those version snapshots I mentioned before that capture the state of that table at any point in time. And so you can use that to effectively keep, have a catalog of all your schema changes and kind of have change data capture built into uh, your tables. And you know, so schema changes don't involve needing to or needing to rewrite and rebuild uh, your entire table. Another really big advantage of Patch Iceberg is its flexible partitioning strategies. So it goes beyond just kind of traditional hive style partitions and actually embeds partitioning information in metadata, which really helps to enable efficient query pruning and then also reducing the amount of data scanned during queries. Um, and then finally, you have snapshot isolation and time travel. So again, because you have that snapshot based architecture that you can see a consistent view of the data over time. Um, so, you know, readers are able to constantly pull from a data set versus your writers, people are sending data in that data set can make changes without worrying that it's going to affect those downstream readers. And so this also enables features like time travel where because you have all these, this record of changes, you can roll back those changes and go to, or just go back to a previous snapshot of that table and query data as if it just existed at that previous snapshot. Um, so really good for use cases where you need to go back and capture historical records and information. So now you kind of have an idea of how Apache Iceberg works at the high level. I want to talk about how it's used in the real world. And so just kind of where you should think of Apache Iceberg as sitting within most data stacks is as kind of a layer above all of your cloud storage. Um, so it manages the interaction, you know, the storage of data within there within that special Iceberg format. Um, and it, you know, stores it wherever cloud storage bucket uh, you actually want to use for supporting your data lake house storage. Um, and the reason why I keep talking about data lake houses is because As Iceberg is really, really well tuned towards data lake house architectures. It's ideal for data lake house environments where the goal is, you know, combining flexibility and also scalability of data lakes, but having some of the more, you know, complex management and performance features of data warehouses. And as it also helps provide robust asset transactions 
So it makes it really well suited for enterprise data lakes where you need to have a little bit more control and understanding of what's going on in the data lake rather than, you know, maybe someone that's just starting out and just throwing everything into a data lake. You know, if you're a startup, you're not gonna worry about wasting a lot of time developing these processes. But you know, when you're at really large organizations, you gotta be really strict about your data. Um, and so Apache Iceberg is able to handle, you know, both stream and batch processing workloads as well, very seamlessly. Uh, so as you can see, you know, we have both streaming, you know, things like Flink, but also things like Spark um, that can both leverage Iceberg because Iceberg has the ability to manage incremental data and updates, perform snapshot-based queries, which is really perfect for either real-time analytics or ETL processes. Um, and it has that kind of optionality when you're using it because, hey, you know, I can get the most latest data right when it's generated, or you know, maybe I don't trust that latest data. I need it, I want it to be clean first. So I'm actually gonna take a snapshot of you know one or two days behind, and you have that ability within Apache Iceberg to even do both of those at the same time. Additionally, the really detailed metadata management structure and the ability to evolve schemas over time make it a really great fit for environments that have strict data governance and compliance requirements because it's going to help ensure that you have data integrity and then also when the auditors come in, you have a way to have easy auditing and tracking of all the different changes, everything that's happened to your data over a really long time period and the ability to you know, roll back and, and go to a particular point in time that someone might be requesting for a report. Um, and then Finally, advanced analytics. Um, Icebergs has really efficient partitioning and pruning capabilities, which make it a great choice for advanced analytics workloads because it enables users to run complex queries on large data sets without incurring really significant performance penalties because you have that efficient partitioning where, hey, I don't need to look across every single object that's stored within my object storage. Iceberg is able to take that query and partition it down to just a specific subset of that that it needs to uh, run and query to get that information. So now I want to kind of explore some of the pros and cons that you might run into if you choose Apache Iceberg as your uh, you know, data lake house provider or data lake provider. Number one in terms of pros is that schema evolution capability uh, I mentioned before. The ability to handle schema changes without needing to you know, run expensive rewrites is a really significant advantage um, because it means you don't have to spend a lot of manpower and time working through these really large rewrites that are you know both computationally expensive and then it's also going to be manpower expensive because you have to you know it's a lot of mental not a lot but it can be a large mental burden to have to figure out how to rewrite and reconcile all these different needs when you're handling schema changes and so having the ability that's just built in to handle schema evolution really helps to ensure flexibility and then reduce that maintenance overhead over time um, additionally, that, those ACID transactions I mentioned before, Iceberg supports full ACID transactions, providing that data consistency, that really strong reliability that comes with ACID transactions, and that can be crucial for some enterprise applications. So it's kind of a no-brainer to go with Iceberg for applications that require that. You also have you know, really great scalability. Um, Iceberg is really designed for large-scale data sets and can handle you know, petadates, petabytes of data efficiently. Uh, making it really, really suitable for those big data applications where you need to just, you know, throw the kitchen sink and everything else into that data lake. Um, it's also a very interoperable engine. Um, it's compatible with Spark, Flink, Trino, Hive. You saw kind of all those different examples up on the screen earlier. There's not a lot of uh, situations where you won't have the ability to integrate with Apache Iceberg um, for, you know, obviously relevant solutions. And so that offers you a lot of flexibility in choosing the right tool for the job outside of just Apache Iceberg. And then, Finally, those, that efficient querying I mentioned, you know, those advanced partitioning and pruning techniques, you really, have ensure, you really are ensuring efficient querying and reducing the amount of data scanned, and then also you know, having that downstream effect of also improving query performance because you have those, that partition data that's easier to search through and query. Now, on the downside of things, there is a pretty decent amount of complexity that comes with implementing and managing Iceberg, uh, especially if you haven't worked with some of those formats like Parquet and Avro and Big Data Ecosystems. It's a lot to take in all at once. So starting with you know, just learning how Parquet works, how Avro works, how you know, these more kind of complex data table formats work is really crucial to being successful with Iceberg. And then it's also pretty resource intensive. Um, you, know, you save a lot on the queries, but the metadata management and snapshot isolation features and storing all the snapshots, 
can be really re resource intensive and require a lot more compute and storage overhead uh, compared to simpler data formats. Additionally, um, you know, while Iceberg supports many different processing engines, integrating and actually maintaining those systems and making them work nicely with Iceberg can be a pretty significant operational overhead and it's gonna require you to you know, get your hands dirty and build out some integrations and how it works together because it's not always super smooth um, integrating them. And then also the community ecosystem maturity. You know, Iceberg is getting super popular in the ecosystem. You know, you got Snowflake that really took a shine to it and is implemented as its you know standard uh, data lake format. But its community ecosystem are still a little bit less developed than more Apache or more established solutions like Apache Hooty um, or Delta Lake. So just something to keep in mind, you know, if you're trying to implement this, you know, really open source, is you might not have as much community resources to lean on as you might expect. Um, but anyways, that is kind of my intro primer to Apache Iceberg. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy.